Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. It would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. So, um, it's really sad and disheartening for me. Um, they've worked so hard, beautiful big home and nice property and right away I kind of started hanging out at the railroad stables up the, <laughs> up the road. That makes sense. And eventually we had horses and we, they built a barn for me and we had the horses on the property and everything was so nice about it. You know, we went on trail rides and enjoyed the, the woods and the streams and the views. And it was, it was a really nice spot to grow up. Yeah, there's trails all up through the hill there, isn't there? There was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was. Did you swim in the, in the brook as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. We, there was nice big swimming holes there. My friends would all come down and we'd have campfires on the beach. and. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really nice spot. I see the stress that it's putting on him. It's, um, you know, <laughs> how much work he's been putting into this, trying to fight for what's his. Um, it's, it's a lot of work and he shouldn't have to be doing this at this point in his age. He should be able to enjoy his home and what he's worked so hard for. Um, so I imagine it's, you know, it's probably aging him and uh, even the health concerns that come along with it is, kind of scary to think about what it might be doing to their health and, and my health and my children's health. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of stress on everybody. Um, my mom's always been pretty quiet and kind of <laughs> stands behind whoever she's supporting, um, but she doesn't say a whole lot. But, but there has to be wear and tear on, on her too. Well, yeah, and I mean, she sees what he's going through and how much he's fighting for what he's trying to get. And it's, I imagine it's hard for her too. There's no support. There's nobody helping. <laughs> the people that you would think would help or say they're going to help yeah. don't help. They just they get to a certain point and then they're stuck again. There's yeah. You have some examples of that? Do you have some stories as an observer of dad, you know, and you sit around the dinner table and, man, I talked to so-and-so and this didn't happen. And <laughs> um, well, I, I don't necessarily know the people or who they work for um, but just uh, I think it was last weekend there was um, my son and my other s I have two sons now <laughs> I can't forget that um, uh, we were at their house and while we were there there was a, a blast that happened up in the quarry and um, the, there was somebody that came from the engineering company that was measuring the the sound or the 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 quake like the vibrations i guess they came down and they're like oh well you must be glad that the at least the blast is gone because there's been drilling going on for the last few months they won't be drilling again for another few months so you, you know you won't have to hear the sound of that well they're already drilling again that's pretty frustrating it's it's a constant drill so you know i met my parents two or three times a week with my children enjoying their home as much as we can, but you sit on the back deck and all you hear are trucks and this drill that's constant all day long. And it's, you know, it's, I imagine if you were closer, it'd be really high pitched screech, but it's just a constant, like, yeah, what you can, yeah, what you can imagine a drill going through rock would be, and it's right in your backyard and they're in a valley. So it's probably amplified being in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. <laughs> In your memory, do you have something that just, it really hurt or it was just really sad or? 
Um, every time I drive to my parents and I come around the hill, around the corner, and you get a good view of that hill, that used to be where we would go horseback riding and exploring with friends and my brothers. And every time I drive through there, I see this big hole, <laughs> just a big gray hole in the wall of this beautiful mountain, what used to be a beautiful mountain. And that's, every time I see it, just maddens me and frustrates me and there's been a few things that scare me you know um, those transport trucks that drive by there's um, a big rock that fell off one and was right in their driveway well what if my son had been riding his bike in their driveway or there was a day that we were driving they were driving me home in their vehicle and a dump truck had gone up the highway and there was rocks like fairly big sized rocks all over the highway. My dad had to swerve to get around them. My, both my kids are in the car with us. You know, that's dangerous. But before anybody could do anything, they had gone and cleaned it up. So nothing was done about it. But that's such a big safety thing. Like, that's, that's scary. Yep. <laughs> it's, you know, the dust every day, you know. <laughs> and the dust isn't just dust, is it? No, it's poison. <laughs> yeah, that's something the general audience sort of wouldn't get. You know, mm -hmm. you know the silica dust and yeah. it's like breathing asbestos. Yeah. Last weekend when we were at their house and we were sitting on the deck, we had to go inside after the blast because you could just see this big puff of dust coming towards their house. The way the wind was blowing, it just came and sat over their house and settled on their deck and in their house, you know. How much of that are they breathing in and ingesting? Um. Some people would justify the quarry being there um, for the sake of jobs or economy and that sort of thing. Are jobs more important than lives? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, eh? Do you have mm. any th thoughts about that? Because, you know, New Brunswick has this narrative about we need to create jobs and we're the poorest province in Canada. Your dad and mom and the others are living in that context. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to, you know, jobs as the, the justification for something like that? I agree that they have to create jobs. I mean, people have to work, but I also think that they're probably going to find a job doing something else. Yeah, I mean, they're putting people's lives at risk. It's easy as that. And people's jobs, people's lives, it's, it's pretty clear cut to me. I, I think I'm going to choose my life over somebody's job. What do you think about um, how there was never any compensation offered or any even yeah. communication offered? Yeah. No Once. consideration. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that they should have at least given them a chance to decide what they wanted to do. If they want to stay, fine, yeah. but give them a chance to at least get out because, I mean, they've, like, again, my parents worked so hard for this beautiful home and beautiful property that they've provided us to grow up in, and it's supposed to be their retirement and now they can't, they can't sell it. What are they going to do? They're going to take a huge loss if they, if they do sell it. And that's their retirement. And it's not fair. <laughs> Sad. Now would be the time when they probably wanted to move on and find something a little smaller and, yeah. and easier to maintain and maybe a little closer to town or something. But uh, they can't. Yeah. yeah, they're stuck. They're stuck. Yeah. It makes me mad that they have to go through this. Like I said, it's, it's supposed to be their retirement years. They're supposed to be enjoying their property, being able to sit on their deck and enjoy the backyard and the quiet and the birds and the brook and go exploring in the woods on the four-wheeler with my sons and taking them fishing. And it makes me mad that they can't do that. And it's a constant battle for them. And the fact that it might be affecting their health and many in many different ways. Mm. It makes me mad for them. Mm. The only, like the strongest feeling that I have for them is that I'm sad for them. I'm sad for my children that can't enjoy the property like I used to be able to. And I'm just, I'm just sad that they can't go through and enjoy their retirement property and I'm mad that they weren't given a chance to maybe find something else to enjoy and I'm mad that they don't have the support from anybody that can help them in a big way like 
they, they tell them maybe that they can do something and then they just fizzle out and are gone. I'm concerned a little bit, you know, like not even a little bit, a lot, I guess, about health issues. You know, my children are there. We're very close to my parents. We, we visit a few times a week and, you know, that's kind of scary, I, I hope. <laughs> but what do you do? I, I don't know. Like, it's... Like, how would you test for the impact of silica dust on a two-year-old? Exactly. I mean, just a couple weeks ago, their water was tested and came back with the dangerous metals in their water. And, you know, my son's probably been drinking that water. It, it's supposedly supposed to um, any, um, bring on learning disabilities and whatnot. Now, my son hasn't shown any sign of that, but <laughs> later on, you know, I don't know, yeah. it could. Just the fact you have to entertain that thought. Yeah, yeah. And they're not, I think it should be the quarry's responsibility to be testing that and looking out for that. And if not them, at least the government. Yeah, somebody should be looking out for these people. Yeah. I hope that they can get somewhere with this. It's, it's been too long and not enough people paying attention, not enough people listening, helping. I hope with everything that they've been fighting for, I hope that they can get something, something done yeah. with this. Yeah.